Johan Cruyff is unanimously regarded as the greatest Dutch footballer of all time, and indeed, one of the greatest footballers outright. Cruyff was a captain, a leader, a magician, and above all, an icon, most famously leading the Netherlands to the final of the 1974 World Cup and establishing a brand of football known as Total Football. Cruyff's performances and impact in the 1974 World Cup were widely acclaimed and the Dutch team style of play left a lasting impression on football. However, while Johan Cruyff was undoubtedly the best performer at that World Cup, many seem to forget the brilliant players that made up that Netherlands squad. This included Ballon d'Or runner-up Rob Rasenbring and three-time European Cup winner Ruud Kroll. However, there seems to be one name that gets forgotten more than any other, Willem van Hannigan. The man won everything at club level, several domestic trophies in the Netherlands, the UEFA Cup, and most notably of all, Champions League, or European Cup as it was known back then. He was a key figure for both club and country, being the beating heart of the Netherlands 1974 World Cup team. Additionally, he was voted as the Dutch Footballer of the Year, ahead of Johan Cruyff, yet somehow he seems to be firmly in the shadow of Johan Cruyff and forgotten outside of the Netherlands. Thankfully, I am here to shed light on the genius of Van Hennigan. So sit down, strap in, and join me as we go through the career of one of the greatest and most unappreciated midfielders in the history of football. Van Hennigan was born on February 20th, 1944, in the harbor town of Raskins in the Netherlands. The life and career of Willem Van Hennigan was built on hardship, pure determination, and a desire to succeed. His early childhood towards the end of the Second World War shaped his life. Indeed, before he was a year old, he lost his father, Gert van Hennigan, a former professional footballer, and three of his siblings in a bombing. It was these circumstances that gave him a resentment towards the Germans, being known for his rough, passionate play whenever he played against German sides. He was quoted as saying, I don't like Germans. Every time I played against German players, I had a problem because of the war. After the war had happened, the rest of the family moved east to a new home in Utrecht. It was here that he would later discover the beautiful game. One morning, a 16-year-old Van Hannigan was staring through the fence, watching a training session at his local team, Velox SC, and it was in this observer role that he showed the first glimpses of his natural technical ability. Van Hannigan was sort of like a self-selected ball boy, going out and collecting the balls that had flown over the fence, steadying himself, and then passing them back onto the field. These passes were almost always inch perfect, landing right at the feet of a player. The players thought nothing of it, but the coach, Dan Van Bay, was so impressed that he invited the young boy to train with the team. However, things were not always so smooth. Van Hennigan was described as too slow, too fat, and too reckless by his teammates. While he was large for a 16-year-old, he was not very mobile and was at a physical disadvantage. He only had 70% of his sight and saw the pitch in a fuzzy haze at times. Despite this, coach Van Beek was won over by his immense technical ability and control. He handed him a first team start at the age of 18, deploying him on the left wing. At that young age, he was given the nickname the Chrome, or the Hunchback, because of his often woeful running style, which kind of looked like a hump over gallop. In four seasons at Velox, he scored 39 goals in 109 league games, putting in stellar midfield masterclass performances and kinching the eye of Erste Divisie side. Xerxes. Van Hagen was signed by the Rotterdam Base Club for a fee of 34,000 euros, or around 793,000 euros today. There, he would meet German coach Kurt Linder, a pragmatic and strict disciplinarian who demanded hard work from the young midfielder. His coaching philosophy infuriated Van Hennigan, leading to training ground disputes with Linder in his first start at Xerxes. Eventually, he stepped up to the challenge and adapted to Linder's playing style. His attitude soon changed as the Dutchman saw instant improvements to his game. He became more physically fit and more mobile, which made the Dutchman more dimensional. Additionally, Linder moved Van Hennigan from outside left to a center midfielder, where he would perform the role of inside left in a 4-2-4 formation. It took the Dutchman a season to adjust to this new formation, 
but when he did, he immediately caught fire. De Crome lit up the Erste Divisie, scoring 26 goals as a center mid, his most in a single campaign. His brilliance inspired Xerxes to promotion to the area Divisie and attracted the interest of the Dutch national team, as well as other top Dutch sides, including Ajax and Feyenoord. Ike's coach Renus Mikkels could have signed him but wasn't too keen on his style and stature. He was described by Renus Mikkels as too slow and too one-dimensional, not suited for modern football. His lack of pace didn't deter Feyenoord from approaching his qualities, and in 1968 Van Hennigan moved across the city to join them. In his debut season, Feyenoord won the Eredivisie title, three points ahead of rivals Ajax. Additionally, they won the 1968-69 KMVB Cup in two legs, beating PSV 2-0 in front of over 56,000 fans. That's a lot of people. Van Hennigan played a key role in both triumphs and helped his side to qualify for the European Cup. In the following season, Feyenoord lost out on the title to Ajax and got knocked out of the KMVB Cup. However, this season would be a major triumph in Van Hennigan's career and establish him as a Feyenoord legend. In the first leg, Feyenoord was drawn against Icelandic side Reykjavik Football Club, whom they beat 16-2 on aggregate, with Van Hennigan popping up with two goals. Next, they were drawn against Serie A giants AC Milan. AC Milan could count on the likes of two-time European Cup winner Giovanni Trapattoni and star center forward Gianni Riviera, who won the Ballon d'Or the previous year. They were essentially like Michael Jordan's Chicago Bulls in Italy. In the first game, they were defeated 1-0 before coming back to win 2-0 in the second leg, with Van Hennigan scoring once again. On the road to the final, they also came from 1-0 down to beat East German side Vorwärts Berlin 2-1 on aggregate, Van Hennigan scoring once more contributing to a 2-0 win over Legia Warsaw in the semifinals, progressing them to the final against Celtic. The Scottish Giants were heavy favorites going into the final. They were stacked with world-class players such as Jimmy Johnstone and Tommy Gimmel. However, despite Tommy Gimmel opening the scoring after 30 minutes, they were outplayed by the Dutch outfit at the San Siro. Ernest Hoppel, insured Celtic winger Jimmy Johnstone, was always double marked while deploying Fritz Hassel, Willem van Hennigen, and Will Janssen in a midfield trio in a 4-3-3 formation. Van Hennigen dominated the Scottish side, emerging as a key player in the final. Eventually goals from Israel and Kinval saw Feyenoord crown as European champions. In the next season, van Hennigen would lift his second Eredivisie title the Intercontinental Cup, and was awarded the Dutch Footballer of the Year, ahead of greats such as Ruud Kroll, Johan Nieskens, and Johan Cruyff. Over the next three seasons, Van Hennigan would lift his third Eredivisie title, as well as the UEFA Cup, defeating Tottenham Hotspurs 4-2 in the 1973-74 final. It was this short period of dominance that got Van Hennigan called up to the 1974 World Cup, to which he would cement himself as a Dutch legend. The Dutch had not been to a World Cup in 38 years, but now there was a renewed sense of belief. The Netherlands demonstrated total football in its purest form, which was pioneered by Johan Cruyff and now Netherlands coach Rinus Mikkels. Total football was a tactical system that allowed players to interchange positions seamlessly. This meant that specialized positions were virtually abolished for the outfield players, and individual players became defenders, midfielders, or strikers as the situation required. The Dutch topped their first group with 2-0 and 4-1 wins over Uruguay and Bulgaria respectively, and a 0-0 draw with Sweden. Whilst Van Hennigan didn't contribute so much in the goals department, he more than made up for it with his tackling, vision, touch, control, work rate, and passing. He was the beating heart of this Netherlands side. His performances culminated in a 4-0 thrashing of Argentina in the second round, and a 2-0 win over Brazil to put the Netherlands in the final. The final was held on July 7th at the Olympia Stadion in Munich against West Germany, led by Bayern Munich sweeper Franz Beckenbauer. With Nieskin scoring two minutes after kickoff, the Dutch seemed set to win against a stunned West German side. The dazzling passing sequences and ease 
with which the dust controlled the game was a joy to watch. A controversial penalty in the 35th minute pulled the West Germans level before Gerd Müller headed his 14th World Cup goal to put the Germans in the lead. The Dutch fought hard to the end but could not find an equalizer. On that day, the performance of Willem van Hannigem was not matched by any Dutch player. His touch was assured and passing impeccable. His passion was evident in his tackling as he clattered into one German player after the next. Having felt the full effect of war personally, he was determined to beat the Germans. However, it wasn't enough as the West Germans came out victorious. The dis defeat in the final devastated Van Hennigan. Leaving the pitch in disappointment, Van Hennigan returned home to spend another two underwhelming trophyless seasons at Feyenoord. In 1996, he joined AZ Alkmaar, where his experience helped to inspire a young side to a KNVB Cup medal in his second season. A stint at North American Soccer League club Chicago Sting followed before returning to join his childhood club, Blocks, which had been merged with two other clubs to form FC Utrecht. Finally, he had a second spell at Feyenoord, where he retired. Van Hannigan was an incredibly complete and versatile player, able to play anywhere. He was most often deployed in the center of midfield, but could also play as a defensive or attacking midfielder. He was never the quickest or most offensively brilliant, but his elegance, quick thinking, and technical ability more than made up for. In his prime, he was one of the best midfielders in the world. A brilliant passer of a ball, a tireless runner, and incredibly press resistant due to his ability on the ball, I have no doubt that if Johan Cruyff never existed, he would have gone down as one of the all-time greats. In my mind, Van Hennigem is one of the greatest midfielders of all time and should be remembered as such. This was a player who built a career from the ground up and worked tirelessly to hone his skills and build his talents. The birthplace of Willem van Hennigem, the Dutch province of Zeeland, has a motto, one that emphasizes his life and career. Lutar et Amirgo, meaning, I struggle and emerge. And that is the end of the video. Please feel free to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I'm planning on making more content like this in the future. And if you have a player in mind, put his name in the comments and I will most likely do a video on him. And yeah, I will see you next time.